celebrating the connection with our pets. This is Animal Radio, featuring veterinarian Dr. Debbie White, groomer Joey Villani, news director Lori Brooks. And now, from the Red Barn Studios, here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. And your dream team of experts, let us not forget Dr. Debbie answering your vet medical questions. Vladi, the world-famous Russian dog wizard, the dog father Joey Volani, animal communicator Joey Turner, and horse expert Ernie Rodino all here today. Coming up in just a few minutes, we're also going to talk to Doug Gray from the Marshall Tucker Band. Well, what's the deal with him? Is he an animal lover? Why is he coming on the show? He's an animal lover. He's got some cats. Cats. He's a, big, he's a Persian cat guy. Persian. I just don't picture him as a Persian I cat I know. Guy. Huh? I can't wait to talk to him. But uh, that'll be a flashback to the 70s for me, at least. I remember the song, Can't You See? Remember that? Sure. Oh, right. see, I heard it in a love song is mine. Everybody has their favorite Marshall Tucker Band song. He'll be joining us in just a few minutes right here on Animal Radio. And Joey Volani, what will you be talking about? Smelly face dogs, you know, really stinky faces and how to deal with it quick and easy and get rid of the staining. And we move on from there. If you have a smelly face dog, and this will work on your husband, too. If he's a smelly faced husband, this tip, I believe, is kind of universal. You can use it all. Or smelly cat. Smelly cat. Smelly cat. That's all on the way here. If you want to get in touch with any one of the Dream Team, 1 866 405 8405 to connect right now. Let's go to Ron. Hey, Ron, how are you doing? Okay, how are you? Good. Vlad is right here. What's up with your dog? Oh, I have a German <laughs> Shepherd that I got directly from the breeder as a puppy. Run, 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 run. Stop, stop, please. If you were the woman, I would kiss you right now. No, no, not because... again. <laughs> no, because he's a German Shepherd. You cannot find a better person in the world to talk about this. So go ahead, Ron. Oh. I love you already. Oh, so I love my German Shepherd. Uh, she's adorable. She's about two years old. Ordinarily, all the animals in the house bond with my wife. All the previous dogs we've had. And German Shepherd is a whole new breed for me and our family. And the German Shepherd has bonded to me. I, I guess I'm presumably the alpha. German Shepherd is one man dog normally. We've had some aggression issues. We, she did have some early training with, uh, you know, some specialized training where people they train SWAT dogs and all that kind of stuff. So she oh, had that, a that doesn't bit, sound good. Yeah. So she had like two days of light training, but then my wife says, "No, that's not good." You know. So we She's that. right. Woman was always so wiser than men. Go ahead. Uh, so, but the dog is just completely adorable, level. But but the first time something happened is when I went away for a weekend. And she was so excited to see me. She just, uh, you know, like, lovably, you know, uh, just jumped at me with her mouth open and just, you know, put a little, you know, poke in me. Not No big deal. I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> No big deal. Put a little poke to me. If my Mika would do it to me, she would be, I don't know, she would be kicked out of the house the next day. Come on. Yeah. Oh, my oh, gosh. I, 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 I know. But, but, the, the, and then, uh, but what happens, more so than that, she spooks or freaks out easily. You know, if everything's quiet and all of a sudden uh, somebody comes into the home, yeah, you know, surprises gets... anybody, or my wife goes from the bathroom to another room and makes a noise when she, the dog's asleep, and all of a sudden, uh, Andy, Andy, I'm her name, she goes, rrr, 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 you know. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, like, because you condition your dog to be a KGB in your household, you know? Like yeah, a, like, we don't want it to be that way, but... But they have a natural instinct to be that way. I'm pretty sure in the very beginning, when he just was barking a little bit, because you already told me that you had no experience to deal with um, German shoppers before. And German shoppers are very special dogs. It's like almost like a humans. Uh, there is a second and the smarter level after poodles, uh, which is poodles considering to be the most smarter. I'm not sure why, because their head and brain are a little bit smaller than shoppers, so I guess something... <laughs> what well, that's, our, you don't have a that's our other dog. Our other dog is a spoo. <laughs> okay. A spoo? Uh, that's, that's <laughs> what a spoo is poodle. about now. Okay, let, let me let me stick to the to the, to the point. Uh, yeah. Because I always get in trouble with producer when I just uh, talk too much. <laughs> Here is what it is, my friend. Uh, regarding the second part, it is uh, a logical continuation of the first one. 
you have a German shopper in your household who you allow in the beginning to be very excited. She starts to bark when somebody knocks on your door. Uh, she starts to bark when uh, she, she heard something noises. And you, as the millions of people who are listening right now, were thinking, well, that's okay. That's what, that's what the dogs do. That's feel me better, secure. What they, those people for, forgot to understand, this is not the Russia. In the Russia, if you dog bite someone or scare someone, neighbors, whatever, you can give a couple of bottle of vodka and dealt with that. In America, especially in California, we have more lawyers than dogs. As the pet expert, I participate in the court hearing as the expert witness a lot. And uh, uh, attorneys like the way how I put the things, no signs, just, you know, plain and the jury loves it. So the thing is, you don't want to be even close to what I see the people get in trouble. In this country, which is so happy society, you can, you as a pet owner, can get in trouble even somebody get in your house and try to rob you. And after that, you dog will bite. You're still going to get sued because I had those cases and the people said, oh, we just, we were drunk. We just, we just, uh, you know, uh, it was a different house. We thought it's uh, our house or my friend house, whatever. Listen. My best advice for you, if you have a German shopper, you have to do beyond and above. The German shopper would have like a stupid lab attitude. Loves everyone, thinks everyone is a good guy, and wants to have a peace with everyone. That's it. How to do that? Number one, I would do no barking policies. What so ever no barking policies it can be enforced through different ways you can stop the dog from barking from the objects flying through the air not chairs not tables not something really heavy let's say penny cans uh, coca-cola pepsi cola with the five six pennies inside and they're going to toss a bark it sharp. Color. Okay. Uh, the bark color, the thing is, it's like, uh, can be bad, can be good. Uh, the dog needs to know you're the one who doesn't want to bark. Listen, it will take me a lot of time to explain you, but everything what I yes. say comes from the pack. In the pack mental is the same. If two dogs behind the fence, intruder coming, one dog goes after another dog. That's the dog telling another dog, stay away. It's not your business. You have to tell your dog it's not your business to be police officer. That is why you need to be the one who insert those corrections. If you want to do as far as electronic colors, you get a bit electronic colors, but you got to push the button and not the allow itself to bark. Okay? That one is not going to work for you. You should okay. scream. Ah! And after push the button. And uh, you need to do it with the high power in the beginning and after go down. And never never uh, do it in the little increments up. Otherwise, you're gonna, you know, you will desensitize the dog. This is the un okay. unlike anything on other things. I feel a little uncomfortable to talk because it's required professionals who would be next to you and show you how to do this. But my general guideline this would be, you gotta, it's called contra conditioning. Make your dog like what the dog hates. It means whatever people comes to you, put your dog in the crate first before opening the door. Make sure your dog is quiet. Allow the people come in and feed your dog through the crate with the hot dogs, a sausage, a Polish kalbasa, whatever you can get. They are good cops. You are the bad cop. Invite every your relative, every your friend. Organize pizza party. 10, 20 people uh, per Saturday, Sunday coming in. Your dog barks. You, you stop it. You put her in the crate. She barks in the crate. You snap the crate. You stop it. You are bad cop. The people are good cops. That's where you will contra condition her like a doorbell to the, you know, they will look at the people as the positive. And the strict obedience is very important. Your dog must know reinforced obedience to do anything in the time when she would rather not. Remember, dogs listen to us when nothing better to do. Dogs or cats, horse or emu, animals are people too. A disagreement about dogs at a wedding left four people shot, including the bride and groom. Although 50 people attended the outdoor Arkansas wedding, the details are still sketchy. Authorities said the shooting happened moments after Melissa Smith and Mike Beavers took their vows along Piney Creek in rural Pope County. Smith the Bride said the shooting began after Patrick Paul Duvall's dog started fighting with her dog, who was a guest at the wedding. Duvall was not a guest and didn't know the couple. The dog fight started a human fight, which ended up with 29-year-old Duvall shooting the bride and groom, plus two other guests. Three of the guests were driven to the police station in the back of a pickup truck, while police found a fourth victim at the site of the wedding. 
Patrick Paul Duvall now faces four counts of first-degree felony battery, each of which carries a maximum prison sentence of 20 years and a $15,000 fine. I'm Britt Savage for Animal Radio. Animals are people too. Animal Radio. Hi, it's Alan Cable with another dog tip. Change is stressful for you, so imagine how it is for your dog. Things like moving to a new place or moving in with someone. And yeah, how about bringing home that new baby? When you do that, you're adding a new member to the pack. A lot of folks bring a new baby home and actually shut their dogs out. Give them less attention. Get anxious when the dog moves close to the baby. The dog will associate the baby with negative feelings, and your anxious energy will make the dog feel unstable. You don't want that, so let's talk about bringing that new baby home. First, as always, you want the dog to know that the baby is higher in the pack order. You want to teach your dog to respect the baby, and you do this with space. Well, Alan, what does that mean? The baby has a space the dog's not allowed into, like a nursery. You know your baby's coming, the dog doesn't. So when you set up your nursery, it's a great idea not to let your dog in that room. Long before the baby comes home, you're telling the dog that the baby is higher in the pack order. You teach your dog that that room's off limits. Try to keep the same structure you had before. If you take your dog on walks, and you should, keep doing it, but do it with the baby. You can even practice with an empty stroller before the baby comes home. And remember, the dog walks behind the stroller or at your side, never in front. When you enter your house, you're always in front of the dog. Since you're carrying the baby, that again reinforces that the baby is higher in the pack order. Now, once you have your baby, have a member of your family bring one of the baby's t-shirts home. It's got the baby's scent all over it. Put it on the floor, but don't let your dog get near it. Trust me, he can smell it fine from a couple of feet away. After that, you can pick it up and let him get a little closer, but don't let him touch it. Then just go throw it on the floor in the nursery. Again, this is teaching space and respect. Now, the day you bring the baby home, you want to be calm and confident. And you also want to make sure your dog's real tired out before you do it. Have somebody take him for a long walk or play with him. A tired dog is a calm dog. Act like you've come home with the baby a million times before. No big deal. You're calm and confident. And never let your dog invade your space or the baby's. With just a little thought and planning, your dog will give your baby space and respect. People say less is more. At Red Barn, we think less is better. It's what you won't find that sets our natural premium pet food apart. No byproducts, no corn or soy, no fillers. Just the natural ingredients your pets need to live the healthy life they deserve. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Red Barn canned food for cats and dogs is grain and gluten free. Need a fix of the good stuff? Get more Animal Radio with the free Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. It's Animal Radio celebrating our connection with our pets. Bring your pets around the radio. We actually have a, another show going on. It's, it's real high-frequency show that only your pets can hear <laughs> as we do our show. So they're, they're, they'll enjoy it, too. Bring them around the radio, if you will. one 866 405-8405. We have another call. For, this is for Dr. Debbie, right? Yes, it is. And we have Kathleen. Awesome. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, how are you? Good. Where are you calling from today? Jacksonville, Florida. I love Jacksonville. Beautiful place. Beautiful weather. Yes, it is. So what's going on with your animal? Well, I have my dog, Nisha. She's, uh, she's about three years old. Um, she's totally housebroken, has been for a very, very long time. And I was visiting my mom down in St. Augustine Beach. And Misha started in the middle of the night, 3.30 in the morning, she started crying. And she was just very upset and kind of doing this wookie talk like she's looking for attention. And all of a sudden, just peed on the bed. Mm. This is not a dog. who she, she has had a history of bladder infections, but this one just cleared up with antibi- antibiotics in 12 hours. And, and how many she, bladder infections has she had over time? Let's see, the first year that I had her, three of them, and then we got her onto a uh, science diet food that's okay. specific for, you know, CD or whatever. And then okay. the vet thought, you know, she'd been well for several years now and that we could try to take her off it. Well, this happened within two months of changing the food to a cheaper brand. I'm just wondering if, it's, if that could have been a coincidence, maybe because she's in a strange place. Or if you think it, it could have been a, another recurrent bladder infection that kind of came and went that fast just by changing out that food. 
Now, during the time she was on that diet, had she had any Ooh. urinary tract infections? She did not. Ooh, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, it kind of seems like duh, but at the same yeah. time, <laughs> at the same time, it was uh, it was almost like too quick on on changing the food, almost that it. it I don't know. And then the, now, the, the did they get a, cleared it up in a matter of six to twelve hours. Okay. Now, did they get a urine sample at that time? Not able to. Oh, darn, because that would have been great. Yeah. I mean, that would be the evidence we need to prove this. Um, but I'd say it is suspicious because any time any diet that a pet is on, when we're talking about trying to control urine environment, mm-hmm. um, there are some pets that pH can really play a role in um, crystal formation and urinary tract right. infection. So any diet, when you switch that, um, the pH may change and that urine environment is going to change. So, yeah. Oh, we we could be setting up for some problems, and she may be telling you, "Gosh, mom, you know, I do need a um, a therapeutic diet to help manage okay. this problem." But I would say, yeah, I would, oh, I would love that evidence, and I'd love to get that urine sample because then I think you could kind of maybe either ease your mind or know with more um, accuracy yeah, about that. Yeah, she's just so skittish sometimes; it's hard to get near her when she's going. <laughs> a couple of years ago, we put her through the needle biopsy part where they stuck uh-huh. the needle in and. And they pulled it out, and they um, they did find some crystals in it then, which is why we did the CD. Mm-hmm. But she's not showing any sign of any kind of problem now for so long. I thought it might be safe to try. Mm-hmm. And uh, this, as it came on, it was... Yeah. It well, probably and I, wasn't I, even a month. I mean, it was immediate. Uh-huh. And, and I, I don't uh, blame you for trying there. I mean, because, I mean, realistically, everyone wants to find something that works. And then if you don't need it anymore, you know, you wouldn't want to give it. But um, yeah. for me, I would definitely say, yeah, a urine sample. And it might not be a bad idea for a for a kid that's had a problem in the past with recurrent mm-hmm. urinary infections, you know, getting that sterile sample would be important. And, you know, it wouldn't be overkill to check an x-ray to make sure we don't have anything like a bladder stone that's just kind of lurking okay. there. Because definitely something with bladder stones, they can cause some little micro trauma to the bladder wall. And I've had dogs right. that have lived with them for years. And then we pick them up as a, oops, we're taking an x-ray because the dog was vomiting. And then they have this ugly stone in their bladder. And then, you know, we go, wow, this dog never complained about any kind of urine problem. Um, but yeah, so some of these things can be kind of sneaky in that way. So, um, yeah, if two, you, I guess two and a half years ago. And in fact, we did, uh, CT, we did ultrasound. We did um, Good. all kinds of stuff just trying to find out what was going on. There, there were some uh, tiny, small evidence of very small crystals, but then it, it just seemed to go away with this with this diet. And the vet thought it might be might be safe to try her on on something else. And uh, I just I thought maybe it could have been environment because she was she's not used to being at my mom's. I had her in a strange place, and she's skittish anyway. So. Mm-hmm. I just thought I'd try to maybe get another another opinion on it. Yeah. No, so right now, what food is she eating? Oh, science diet. I love my dog. I would just, I'd put her on the science diet immediately. You put her back on the diet. Okay. Any problem? I, yeah, I would never ever take a chance. I, okay. well, I normally wouldn't take a chance anyway, but I was trying to try to save money because you know it's tough out there. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, but, and even if you can't get a a sterile sample at the veterinary office um you know if she's calmer with you around and she's not pee shy um you know once she's settled you know back on that cd diet um it would be worthwhile to at least get a clean urine catch and kind of like you know we go to the doctor's office and they have a whole process they tell you when you get a clean urine sample so we can try our best at home to collect a urine sample from our pets and with uh with the advent of you know those throwaway tupperware containers or some great throwaway plastic you can use um, and just kind of slide that underneath her, let her go, That's let her start the it. stream. Yeah. I, I was and trying to get it a little cup, but apparently it, it's hard to do. It can be. So I like those long ones that you use for, oh, I don't know. We use them for storing like bread and stuff. Pizza, yeah. <laughs> but the long, uh, flat ones. And you just kind of slide that underneath her, let her void and let her go for a few seconds, then put it in the stream of urine. And you're going to be more apt to catch a more clean, okay. free catch sample. And that might be more meaningful for your, for your veterinarian. People say less is more. At Red Barn, we think less is better. It's what you won't find that sets our natural premium pet food apart. 
No byproducts, no corn or soy, no fillers. Just the natural ingredients your pets need to live the healthy life they deserve. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Bar Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Red Barn canned food for cats and dogs is grain and gluten-free. Hi, everybody. This is Frankie Avalon, and I love Animal Radio. Keep listening. This is an Animal Radio News Update. I'm Stacy Cohen for Animal Radio. Emergency responders in the UK say a two-year-old basset hound picked the perfect time to learn how to use a phone. According to The Sun, the dog called 999. That's the British version of R911. He was choking on the phone's cord. The dog had reportedly knocked the phone over while his owners were away, and he became tangled in the cord. Well, somehow he managed to dial for help while trying to free himself. Authorities heard heavy breathing on the other end of the call. They knew it wasn't an 800 number calling, and they ran in the home frantically searching for somebody inside. Well, they wound up finding this dog with a phone cord wrapped around his neck, set him free, and he's eating treats and living happily ever after now. A Minnesota man is running into trouble with city officials in regards to his hundreds of reptilian roommates. The St. Paul Pioneer Press reports that Scott Nellis had been building his collection of 360 snakes, 60 lizards, and the hundreds of rodents and cockroaches that he uses to feed his pets since 1996. Oh, I bet that house smelled so good. But now inspectors have declared that his house is unfit for human habitation, and they've ordered him to remove the reptiles. Huh. But what about the cockroaches and the rodents? A city attorney says a number of extension cords and drawers full of reptiles have created a number of fire hazards, and the excess amounts of ammonia from the animal waste have greatly lowered the home's air quality, not to mention the price. Nellis, however, is meeting with city officials today and hopes to convince them to change their minds. Authorities in Switzerland say they are looking for a suspect who's rather pig-headed. The UK's Orange News says a man recently threw three pig heads into a cake shop in Lucerne. Witnesses say the heads crashed into the displays, causing pastries and blood to fly everywhere. The owner of the cake shop says the incident was clearly upsetting, adding that all they could do was apologize to their customers. The suspect is also believed to throw a pig head at a group of tourists. Police are now checking local farms to see if anybody's been buying a large number of pig heads. I don't know, maybe they ought to look and see if any of these pigs are missing their heads. A man in England is hoping that his stolen parrot's Freddie Mercury impression will be the bird's ticket back home. Malcolm Booth tells his son his African gray parrot named Chico was recently taken from his home. But he doesn't expect the separation to last very long, explaining that Chico has a habit of singing Bohemian Rhapsody. We, you know that song, We Are the Champions, and other hits by British rock icons Queen. Booth says the bird's squawking doesn't really bother him because he's a big fan of the band, but he expects it's uh, not everybody's cup of tea. He hopes the entertainment drives the thieves up a wall so they have no choice but to return Chico to get a little peace and quiet. I'm Stacy Cohen. Get more animal breaking news at Animal Radio. Dot com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update. Get more at AnimalRadio.com. Hi, this is Iron Chef Kat Cora on Animal Radio. Please adopt a pet. But we all know Hale is not the bad dancer. He's a wonderful dancer. And like I normally say with my clients, you pick the music, I will tell you how to dance. It's Animal Radio. Wow, Vladi, you're quite the dancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, you just mentioned I was I was flying to Michigan on vacation. You are wrong. I was flying to Michigan on business. Oh, really? My wealthy clients from wealthy. Michigan, who I trained few dogs five, six years ago, they've got a new puppy. They've got uh, uh, Pomeranian. And everyone in Michigan tried to train that dog without any results. So they sponsored my visit. They paid for traffic uh, fare, or it's just separate talk. Oh my gosh! And <laughs> it was a, it was a, like a war zone for me to flying to to Detroit uh, from Orange County. And um, after that, for hotel, and they paid a lot of money for me staying. I was four days working with that puppy. But boy, we got it. We made it. You fixed Mission their problem. Account. Oh, I, fi- I, I, I fixed it to the degree they didn't even expect it, and they were so happy. They even gave me tips. 
What, so they gave what was you the a puppy tip? doing? Yeah. What was was wrong? Well, their major concern was the puppy was running through invisible fans and never come back, and they were chasing it for days. But I told the people, this ah uh, ah uh, uh, this is just the symptoms of the problems. You don't you, you dog didn't have a good relationship with your dog. You didn't have a bonding with the dog. So you know we started from a very behavior problem. Excuse me, from obedience. We trained the dog on leash, off leash. Took it everywhere, and after that, I fixed that invisible fence. So they were very happy. Wow! And they paid a lot of money for that. Yeah, they feel very wealthy. Their house in Michigan and the lake, uh, similar probably to size wise to Microsoft uh, headquarters, something wow. like that. So. so you're telling me those people spent probably thousands of dollars to bring you out there, but the listeners can call right now at one eight six six four zero five eight four zero five and talk to you free of charge. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes, besides giving the numbers, because I've been told in America you cannot ask how much you make, and you're not supposed to give the answers. <laughs> in just a couple of seconds, we're going to talk ears, because sometimes you go to the vet, and they say, uh, you came in for this problem with your dog's ears, and you didn't need to do it. You could have taken care of this at home. No, they don't, they don't actually say that. They always walk <laughs> in. With, okay, so my cat is walking around, scratching its ears, and it's tipping its head sideways. Is this a sign that I should go to the vet or not? Uh, what's going on, Doc? That's a very good thing to think about. And, you know, the big thing is with a lot of people, I see that they don't recognize is when they need to go to the veterinarian for an ear problem. They kind of dismiss it. They don't recognize what's normal and abnormal. So we want to clarify that. And we're going to either save you a trip to the vet okay. or we're going to help get your pet there when they really need to. Okay. Um, so the big thing is we're going to use the people's senses, the pet parents' senses and their own powers of observation along with maybe a good cleanser that you can use at home and then we can help identify this problem or not uh, so the big thing is we want to watch it we're going to smell it we're going to rub it and we're going to clean it Ooh, that sounds it crazy sure does. doesn't it <laughs> but basically when you look at your dog's ear or cat you, we want to make sure that the head position is normal the head is straight and that they shouldn't be doing any unusual scratching or rubbing at the ears if they're scratching rubbing um, if they tip that head to the side like you said how yeah. that is a sign of an infection or a problem that needs to be Address. Wow. And what, why do they do that? It's just equilibrium or? Well, partly it can be itchy. It can be uncomfortable. But yes, it can get down to the deeper part of the ear canal. And that can actually lead to a vestibular disturbance or basically an equilibrium problem where they kind of don't sense which way is up. So um, that's actually a more advanced ear infection. And we want to get that pet to the vet right away. Mm. Well, you know, my cat doesn't tip his head. What he does is the head is straight, but one ear is straight out to the side. Oh, he'll point his, they, point his yeah, ear Yeah, put his sideways. ear down. Why not? ear will be up and the other one will be down. Is that a bad sign? But they yeah, don't that tip. sure can. And now some pets will certainly have, uh, like some dogs will have ears, one that might not stand fully and it's just kind of canted to the side. So that's a little different. But if normally the ears are erect and that you at one point notice that the ears tip to the side, yeah, that's something we need to take a look at. Um, the other big thing is really smelling. And you oh, know yeah. me, I love picking up odors in veterinary medicine. I think it's like the coolest I thing. I think that's why you sit next to Vlade all the time. I'm not sure. <laughs> Come on. Oh. <laughs> but, I but the f f friends perfume people. Oh, that's and French European perfume. Gentlemen. Oh, there you go. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yes. So a good dog or cat ear should smell like a clean dog or cat. There's a little bit of a doggy odor, um, sometimes a little bit of that Frito foot thing you smell mm. um, when you smell a dog's feet. That's healthy and that's a normal odor. If we're picking oh. up anything that's actually kind of like a yeasty or what I kind of describe as an old man's dirty socks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, well, what is the topic we're talking about? Just, you know, all the bad things. <laughs> you know, I understand yes. that. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's if it smells like your, your father's old rotten sock that's, you know, laying down <laughs> Down there in the laundry chute, um, oh, that, that doctor, is a problem. Honestly. Yeah, doctor, uh, why, why are some dogs just genetically predisposed to that? Like, uh, let's say, um, chocolate laps, I see it all the time in them. It's kind of breed related, or is it? Sure. Uh, yeah, we do see a lot of related? retrievers will definitely have ear infections. Cocker spaniels, um, they're a breed that have a lot of ear problems. So you want to definitely get on board. Um, a part of it is they're prone to more allergies. Food allergies. Uh, uh, they can have 
Um, they can have keratinization disorders that can build up to more wax in the ear canal. So all those things really are kind of tied together there. Okay, so we're watching it, we're smelling it, and what else should we do? We're going to rub it. <laughs> Boy, this sounds like a sex talk, doesn't it? Does, it? Doesn't it? <laughs> but yeah, most dogs enjoy a good ear rub, and, and they're going to enjoy your, they may do that when you, you put your finger in their ear, but if you hear crying, if you're hearing whining, or if when you rub the ear, that back foot on that same side comes up and they start scratching vigorously, oh. that's a sign that there's a problem in that ear. So you want to get that baby to the vet. Okay, what about cleaning it? Finding out what that stuff is in their ear. Cleaning, yeah. And we're going to use a non-medicated cleanser. Um, and you're going to basically find in a healthy ear, maybe a little bit of yellow or brown wax. And, and just enough that comes up on a cotton ball on your fingertip. Not a lot. So if you're seeing anything oozy, anything that's got blood or kind of chunky brown clumps, what I term as Oreo cookie crumb uh, debris, that is an infection. And that's something that needs to be addressed. Okay. So we need to watch it, smell it, rub it, and clean it. We'll put all these tips over at the website so you can determine yourself if your animal's ear problem is something that needs to be taken care of by the vet or if it's something that you can take care of at home. 1-866-405-8405. We are going to the phones next. You're listening to Animal Radio. Find us at AnimalRadio.com. Log on, learn more. Fido Friendly Magazine presents the 11th Annual Cross-Country Pet Adoption Tour, Get Your Licks on Route 66. Brought to you by media sponsor Animal Radio and companion sponsors Paws and Claws, Blackwood Pet Food, and Zymox. The tour travels from Los Angeles to Chicago from September 7th to October 13th, stopping at shelters along the way to support adoption events and to raise money for the shelters. Advocate sponsors Hands-On Gloves, Tito's Vodka, Rolf C. Hagen, and Buddy Belts, along with community sponsor Doggy Water to Go, help provide great prizes when you donate to spin our giant spinning wheel with all proceeds benefiting the shelter that day. Log on to FidoFriendly.com to learn where the tour stops near you. And who knows, you just might find your new forever friend. Check out Animal Radio highlights. All the good stuff without the blah, blah, blah. Browse on over to AnimalRadio.pet. Animal Radio. 1-866-405-8405. Dr. Debbie answering your vet medical questions. Ernie Rodina, our horse expert with your horsey talk. Animal communicator Joy Turner bridging that gap. Dog father Joey Villani. She's toting mm, some great giveaway. stuff from Wall. We have uh, Beverly on the phones. Hi, Beverly. You wanted to talk to animal communicator Joy Turner. I have an 11-year-old yellow loud Rottweiler mix that's really dealing with a lot of pain with arthritis, and I've been trying a lot of different things on him, and I was just wondering if you could ask him, am I getting anywhere with any of the stuff that I'm using on him? And would you tell me his name, please? Animals always love to be called by their names, just like we do. So okay. what's his name? His name is TJ. Okay, PJ says to tell you, and by the way, animals tend to be incredibly stoic a lot of the times. So often they won't communicate exactly what they're really feeling, but PJ is really wanting to let you know it works all right, but he doesn't expect that anything is going to get very much better. Oh, no. And this really is a very common thing with animals. They tend to live very much in the moment, so they're not all that concerned and they just sort of flow with the way it's feeling, and sometimes that's a good thing from our perspective, and a lot of times it's not. So he just wants you to be able to do whatever you can to keep him comfortable, and he thinks he's really fine with what's going on. I know that seems weird from a human perspective, but again, it's a quite common animal thing. Well, I know they tolerate pain a little better than what we do, and I was just wondering whether or not he's, he's okay with what he has. I mean, if pain, is it bad? No, he's, he says he's fine for now. He's fine for now? Yeah. Okay, do you have enough time for one more question? What would you like to know? Right. I had spoken to you a few months ago, not referring to TJ, but to a cat that just came walking through my house as if she lived there before. And you had said to me, she said she did. But she wouldn't tell you what, where, where did she come from and what, what animal was she before she left, left me and now is back. Okay. Her name, her name is, I named her J-Lo. Sure, let me see what JLo has to say. And she does actually acknowledge that name, so that is a really good thing. And again, I'm going to kind of revert back to a common thing. Animals, 
as I said, tend to be very much in the present. And so for JLo, she says you have to think back very far. You have to think back to when you're very young. And she doesn't want to be with the family she was with. She really came looking for you. Right. Does that answer okay. your question? No, that's, that's fine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your call, Beverly. You're very welcome. Have a good day. One eight six six four zero five eight four zero five to connect with the Dream Team. Yeah, I'm sorry. Don't go nowhere because you know I had to bring this up. That this is perfect timing, but I think I need to talk to Human Resources on this show about joy. Oh, okay. because last <laughs> night <laughs> my dogs, okay, were staring up at the ceiling, uh-huh. and then they would look at me, and then they would stare up at the ceiling, <laughs> and they would look at me, and I know she was talking to them. <laughs> I know she was saying something. So, you know, we we may have a little problem here, Joy. I'm sorry, but I. Got to talk to human resources about this. Every now and then, especially it seems like your kids, they just really want to have their say. And it's like, hey, we need to talk to you. So come on over here and talk to us. Dr. Debbie answering your vet medical questions. Vladi, the world famous Russian dog wizard. Joey Volani, the dog father. Animal communicator, Joey Turner and Ernie Rodina. Is this your first week? Welcome. I tell you what, it's just great to hear Joy talking about this communication thing because it's got the buzz just going crazy about it. Vinny Penn, your party animal, coming back at you. One quick question to throw your way. Whatever happened to the doghouse? And I don't mean the sofa after you've had it out during dinner over what you were going to watch on TV that night. Uh, Survivor versus One Tree Hill. Not that doghouse. We all know that doghouse is alive and well. A buddy of mine just uh, bought a new place. We're visiting him this past weekend. He takes me out to show me where Thor's room is. Uh, And Thor's room, to be honest with you, is what I would call the back patio. Huge awning, big sofa bed, plush, very comfortable. Uh, This whole area to meander about. And it got me to thinking about when I was a kid, uh, almost every backyard had that really cool, just kitschy, cool doghouse way in the corner. And it was exactly that. I mean, it was a little small for some of the dogs, sometimes pretty big for some of the other dogs. And it would have their name over the roof. And uh, I mean, sure, back then we thought, oh, when it pours and rains, they must run. And they never stopped to think how much the dog might love it in there. They don't need to be upgraded to the, the bridal suite. I don't know that a lot of the, I think the animal communicators out there, as much as I think that's farcical, they might tell you, you know, uh, I'm looking at Spot here and uh, I think he needs some space. I think he wants some distance from you guys. And, uh, you know, on the back patio, he could hear you squabbling over the O'Reilly factor and it's not really working for him. The back patio? Please don't let the doghouse go the way of even the, the, the birdhouse or the treehouse. Some other guys I know pointed to the fort they had uh, in the backyard for their kids, and it was completely prefab. It was not just those planks wedged into the tree that really weren't even safe, with the ladder just being planks of wood nailed into the tree kind of haphazardly and uh, the fire department uh, needing to be called just to get the kids. Out. This is this is what youth was in the 70s. No, you weren't safe in that treehouse in the backyard. and You didn't want to be. Uh, and yeah, the doghouse was a little bit small for the dog, and maybe he did get a little bit scared during thunderstorms, but it was better than him hearing the two of you make love. I'm Vinnie Penn, your party animal, baby. Hello, this is Jane Goodall on Animal Radio, and i just like everybody to realize that each day you live, you make some difference on the planet, and you can choose what kind of difference you're going to make. And hopefully every day you'll try to make the world a little bit better for people, for animals, and for the environment. Here is today's top automotive news story. I'm Nick Miles. This year marks the 70th anniversary of a bath and the 120th anniversary of Fiat. In celebration, Fiat has introduced a new Scorpion Sting graphic for the Fiat 124 Spider Abarth. Starting at $25,390, the Fiat 124 is the most affordable roadster in its class, and you can add the Scorpion Sting appearance group for $395. To find your new Fiat, see our reviews at ourautoexpert.com. 
Think O'Reilly Auto Parts for all of your car care needs. We're close, convenient, and known for our guaranteed everyday low prices and excellent customer service. For professional parts people you can trust, stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts today. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts. Better prices. Every day. Celebrating the connection with our pets. This is Animal Radio. Featuring veterinarian Dr. Debbie White, groomer Joey Villani, news director Lori Brooks, and now, from the Red Barn Studios, here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. And your dream team, Ernie Rodina, is our horse expert, animal communicator, Joy Turner, dog father, Joey Volani, is your groomer, Vladi, the world-famous Russian dog wizard, and Dr. Debbie. Vladi, back from a much-undeserved vacation last week. You actually got in trouble on the airlines, is that correct? No, they got in trouble with me on the airplane because, you know... They, they they tried just to pick up the fight with me on every stop. And it was a four stops, four fights. Oh, will you tell us about it a little <laughs> later on? Sure, I will. I can't I wait. I definitely will. Okay, also on the show, the season of stars continues. Unbelievable. I want to just, can I go down the list real fast of who we've had on? Betty White, Billy Dean, Margaret Cho, Elaine Boozler, Davy Jones before he passed, Frankie Avalon, Carrie Ann Anaba, Prince Lorenzo Bergese, uh, let's see, NASCAR's Corey Joyce, Chris Christian Chenoweth. Am I missing anybody? I think you got everybody. Coming up, we have Eddie Money, Lyle Lovett, Kevin Costner, and the Bellamy Brothers all within the next few weeks. All of them love their animals and want to share their stories. Today, Doug Gray from the Marshall Tucker Band will grace us with his presence. He's a kitty lover, believe that or not. A lot lot of guys admit that they love cats. I believe his animals are Cheech and Chong. Yes, two kitties. Two kitties, (laughs) Cheech and Chong, Persian kitties. And uh, he's on the way right here on Animal Radio. Also, so Joey Volani today will tell you how to get rid of that smell that your bronchospheric Brachycephalic. Brachycephalic. Brachycephalic dog. And that means, of course, that they have that crunched up face like they've been chasing parked cars. If you have one of those dogs and their face smells, he'll have tips for you. Boy, it's hot in the studio. <laughs> Open the window over there. I feel like a prisoner in this studio sometimes. I know. It seems like it's getting smaller <laughs> with all these people in it. Speaking of prisoners, have you ever had this experience maybe where you have your brand new little puppy and you're concerned about letting them out of the backyard or going on walks or anything because you don't want them to be exposed to what's out there? It's sort of like an overprotective mother. And I, I can explain well, that. Before they've had their baby shots. Sure. Yeah. I spent from like when I was born to 16 locked in my house because my mom <laughs> didn't want me going out and getting in That's trouble. That's why you're so unsocial. That's exactly why I'm unsocial. And that can Snappy. Make, can, that can make some dogs pretty unsocial too, couldn't it, Doc? Yeah, it sure could. It, it, that's actually what I do call the backyard prisoners. And it, it's a very misguided effort that a lot of pet owners will try to do to protect their pet from infectious disease. And the idea that keeping them in the backyard will avoid exposure to any potential infectious disease. Um, but what it actually does is it creates a real problem, both behaviorally and, um, you know, coming to the vet office or even the groomer. Um, love and I'm sure it, love it, love it, love agree. it, love it. Let me kiss you just for a <laughs> Oh, my gosh. You're just, just telling me just uh, honey, on my, uh, honey on my heart. So keep, go- keep going, please. Oh, well, this is actually something that, you know, in practice and very early on, I had a lot of fellow practitioners, you know, tell people this. And it's just not the way we want to think anymore. So we do want to be cautious. And, you know, we have to keep in mind that puppies do have an immune system that's developing. So they get immunity from mom when they're born, and that'll wear off between 6 to 16 weeks of age, which is important to be smart and not expose them to bad things, but it's also the golden period of socialization. And as Vlad would agree, uh, yes, don't kiss my ring, please. Um, (laughs) That is the time when we want to get him exposed to those unusual, noisy things, new dogs, other pets, uh, noisy people, all those things. And probably this misconception comes from the point because American society means ladies were pushed long ago to the point that they were telling them so breastfeeding is the bad thing. You have to get some synthetic milk. But people, if you get this puppy from reputable breeder and this puppy was sucking the mom's milk, that dog has a natural protection like the doctor says. Once it's vibrating, yes, it's a very wise idea to vaccine him, but don't be too cautious. Otherwise, you're not going to be hurt for another people, hurt for another dogs. 
Mm. Keep going, Doc. Yeah. I love what she's saying. I've taken just, my just, dogs just... out when they were puppies, and I take them out to places that we're going to expose them to later. So as a pup, I took my dog out to the lake. I took him out to the forest. I took him out to the mountains. Now, I was smart. I didn't take them where all the other dogs congregated. Exactly. But we wanted them getting out by the sights and the sounds and exposure to those things. What about Toys R Us? What about uh, maybe a <sighs> huge uh, uh, grocery store like uh, Kroger? What I was doing, I was having Dr. some blank. I put my doggy on this blanket and I have a treats in my hands and I was harassing the people as I always do. <laughs> Could you approach, give my dog some treats? That's what I did all the time. That's a great idea. Now, the thing I would not advise, and, and you have to be cautious, you have to pick the right situation. That's great to socialize to people. What I wouldn't recommend is take that puppy into PetSmart or to those big box um, pet stores. Oh, really? Because the, that is going to be the spot where there's a lot of dogs. You don't know those dogs' immune systems. Exactly. Exactly. what vaccines they've had. So you want to avoid those group areas. Stay away from the dog parks with the puppies. Stay away from the community parks where all the other doggies are brought along. Um, and definitely stay away from the pet stores until they're fully vaccinated. Yeah. And that's alternative if some of your neighbor Mike or neighbor Kathy or mother-in-law or someone who you know have a dog which you know healthy and in the good shape, this is the great idea to bring the puppies in and let them socialize. Of course, I always try to be breed profile. I don't want to have any problems, so I always like stupid golden cell labs because they're just <laughs> goofy. They're not going to do anything to the puppies. <laughs> You don't want to be too overprotective of your animals, like my mom was to me. And just isolating them in the yard doesn't guarantee that they can avoid any infectious diseases anyway, does it, Doc? No, it doesn't. And I've had pets where um, they've come in, and they've actually gotten parvo sitting in their own backyard. Wow. Because people were, they were trying to live under this lifestyle of you know not take the puppy out. And we can bring things like parvo in on our shoes. Um, wildlife can bring in it and parasites and infectious diseases. So, you know, it, it doesn't uh, prove to be 100% effective of this uh, backyard prisoner technique. And my last th thought is in the mid in Midwest, uh, Michigan and Chicago area where I worked, uh, vets were on the site, which is Dr. Davis said, they're not too protective, too much. However, here in California, and even Las Vegas area, I see the vice versa. And in those areas, I see much more social, uh, like a behavioral based problems as aggression toward another people or dogs just because of the lack of socialization. Because when the puppy goes through the critical stages, you gotta fulfill it or you're gonna pay the price. 1 866 405 8405. If you have a question about your animals, now's the time to call. This portion of Animal Radio is brought to you by the Grain Free Red Barn Naturals Canned Food for Dogs and Cats. It's always made in the USA with natural, functional ingredients to support your pet's optimal health. You could learn more at redbarninc.com. And thank you, Red Barn, for underwriting Animal Radio. And we go to Angela. Excuse me. Hi, Angela. How are you? Uh, hey, fine. How are you? Good. I understand you want to talk to Joey Volani. Yes, sir. What's going on? Uh, well, I've got a cat who just loves to be groomed to the point that uh, when I'm not home, my mother's taking care of her. Uh, you know, the cat meets her at the door, runs up on the, to the kitchen counter and jumps up there. My mother gives her a can of food, and she may or may not eat the food before she runs through the pet door into the garage and jumps up on the grooming table to wait for my mother to brush her. Uh, and I'm, I'm explaining all this because, you know, this is not a cat that doesn't like to be groomed. Uh, the problem I'm having is, you know, uh, the, the table is a plastic patio table and chair. Uh, the, I use like a rubber curry brush, like really for a horse. I uh, got a couple of those because they really get the undercoat out really great. The hair flies. But the problem is uh, the cat is getting little shocks that I don't know about from static electricity. And, uh, you know, if I don't notice the tail twitch or the little kitty evil eye, uh, she thinks I'm intentionally doing it, and she will actually, you know, if I don't catch her little signal, she, she'll bite me. Is there any way to cut down the static electricity while she's being brushed? Because she'll sit there and, and love you to brush her for 20 or 30 minutes. Now, I, I got a question for you. It's a short-haired cat, obviously. Yes, sir. The, the, the table that you're using, you said, has a plastic top? It's a solid plastic table on a concrete floor. I think that you're getting the static off of the plastic off the table, but you know what? Instead of changing all that, I got a very, very simple solution. You know okay. dryer sheets, bounce dryer sheets? 
Uh-huh, yeah. What you're gonna, you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of them before you groom your pet, and you're gonna rub the cat down with the dryer sheet. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna eliminate the static. So you're gonna be able to brush and comb your cat with no problems. It's a trick that we actually use in dog shows in certain, certain times of the year, um, when it's a little drier out, you'll get more static. So what will happen is, is you'll get a lot more flyaway hair. And we do that as well. And absolutely will take care the static, your, your, your cat won't be upset, you'll be happy, and it actually makes them smell good. Okay, great. Downy, you say? Bounce, any type of dryer dryer sheets that you get, the ones, the sheets that you throw in the dryer, just put that... Okay, just, so just any brand, just any dryer sheet. Should I, should I rub the tape plastic table with it, too, or just the cat? I would just rub the cat. I mean, it, could, it couldn't hurt. I mean, I've never rubbed down the table before, so I, so I honestly don't know. But I know if you, do, if you do rub the cat with it, it will absolutely, positively eliminate the static. Oh, thank you. You've made both me and my cat very happy. Thank you. That, that's why I'm here, to make you guys happy. Thanks for your call today. Let us know how that Thanks, works. Angela. Dogs or cats, horse or emu. In Long Island, a dog named Bentley took his owner's car for a joyride and ended up crashing into a coffee shop. The 50-pound dog's owner, musician Brian Mayer, said he just wanted to keep his best friend warm, so he left his car running while he ran into the Cool Beans Coffee House to sign up for an open mic night. The next thing I knew, Mayer explains, I looked up to see my van coming at me in the window with Bentley in the driver's seat grinning at me. Luckily, there were no injuries, although a window and some patio furniture were damaged. Bentley seemed to enjoy the ride, wagging his tail happily after he got out. The owner of the coffee shop took it all in stride, calling Bentley a really sweet dog. I'm Britt Savage for Animal Radio. Are people to Animal Radio. Hi, this is Joy Behar on Animal Radio. Please spay and neuter your pets. Yeah, puppy pads are convenient, but sometimes they're really gross. That's why the Animal Radio studio stunt dog, Ladybug, uses the brilliant pad self-cleaning puppy pad. We love how it handles number one and number two. It seals away the waste and replaces dirty pads for us. Brilliant Pad keeps our home clean and smelling fresh. All we do is replace the roll once every few weeks, and the process is fast and clean. In fact, Ladybug gives it five paws up. Learn more about it at BrilliantPad.com. Celebrating our connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio. Here are your hosts, Al Abrams and Judy Francis. And your dream team. I'm talking about, who are you talking about? I'm talking about Ernie Rodina, our horse expert, animal communicator Joy Turner, dog father Joey Volani, Vlade the world famous Russian dog wizard, and Dr. Debbie, all here at your beck and call. And uh, that's such a deal, I'll tell you. If you have a problem with your animals, now is the time to put your fat little fingers in the phone and dial us at one 405 8405. Free medical advice. Free veterinary advice. Vlade, for instance, is a three-month waiting list to get him to come over to your house, but you can get right through to him right now. Or if you have a grooming question, of course, Joey Villani. And he has a great tip coming up that's going to save you a little money. Now, is it called bronchiocephalic? Brachycephalic. 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 If you have one of these dogs and their face smells, and this happens a lot, apparently, and I, I don't have one of these dogs, so I don't know. They look like they've you been... you got to ch- explain what it is, Hal. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's one of the dogs that squishy face dogs. They look like they've been chasing parked cars. Okay, if, yeah. if your dog looks like, what if you have a brachycephalic grandmother? That, that is you know, why Sharpe is so stinky. I have a gross job. I deal with a lot of gross things in the veterinary world. But my sister's a nurse, and I tell you, her stories top mine any given day. <laughs> oh. Well, you like you like your job. You actually got into it because you like the smells and the yucky stuff. I do. I love it. And you know, the other day I had a diabetic kitty that came in and I was so upset because I did not pick up the odor of the diabetes on its breath. Oh. And it had an unusual type of diabetes where they did not have ketones, which is a type of a, a byproduct. Um, so therefore it didn't have the smell. So I whew, wow. said my sniffer's still working today. Okay. 
Well, I noticed when you check out the animals, especially like the, the animals here at the studio, you not only do the whole visual thing, but you'll smell them, too. You, you're all over that. Yeah, I do. And, you know, it puts off a couple people, you know, when they see me sniffing their dog's ears or their skin. <laughs> but, you know, it's really, it's all about finding out what is wrong on every different aspect of the pet. So you'll, if it's sight, smell, I don't taste. So no, you don't. I guess but you'll flip, you'll flip the lips. I mean, you come into the studio and you'll flip everybody's lip just to make sure that we're all healthy oh my with gosh. a little rubber glove and everything. <laughs> Judy, Judy, give me please my my, my perfume from France. There you go, yeah. Vlad. Got Vlad him. is drooling over there. <laughs> Vlad, I am afraid that you have infected my mind. <laughs> I actually quote you at times. I'll say <laughs> to my dog, and my husband looks at me and goes, "What are you doing?" I'm saying, "I'm talking to him. He's not I'm getting glad. away with that." <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you just worry about infecting your mind, nothing else. You know? <laughs> We're too close to each other, you know. <laughs> yeah, you being gone last week, her butts had a chance to heal. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was unbelievable, unbelievable venture for me tra traveling back to the Michigan where I'm from. I got the fight with the flight attendant in the way in, in the way to Michigan. Ah, did you get thrown off the plane? Yeah, I didn't see it in the paper. <laughs> I didn't news. get into the look, people. I mean, that was Minneapolis. I was uh, was I was uh, flying from uh, Orange County. They didn't have a f uh, direct flight to Detroit from Minneapolis. It was Minneapolis crew, and that flight attendant. It's bad enough she was old and fat and ugly. <sighs> It's a bad enough, but you know, like uh, European, we, we, we kind of travel and kind of you, 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 Dr. Debbie was flying through Air France or Switzerland on Russian company. I used to have a, you know, girls was, you know, like a short skirt and there was makeup. And Wait a minute. Balloons. I'm not dressing for your pleasure on an airplane, Vlad. I'm just getting that clear right now. I know. I know. But, but make the long story short. And I ask her, you know, I want to, I want to get some tea. You know, I, you know, I always drink the tea. Hold on. And she, and she looked at me like you were asking, uh, she was expecting me to ask the fries, I guess, or something, or popcorn. And I said, or whatever, and I just said, I want to get the tea. And, and she, if eventually she brought me tea, a little bit similar to Mika's urine, you know. And I said, look, <laughs> <laughs> I said, look, uh, and after I start to really ask you, are you planning to, uh, why you put this tea into the plastic container, not in the paper? Because in the plastic, it's a uh, cancer producing activities. And she told me I'm difficult uh, passenger, and that's all started. And I would complain to the captain about her. So that was the really unpleasant things. But after that, it was Detroit crew from Minneapolis. Oh, I love it. I love it. Girl asked me, Vladi, what you want? And I said, you know, I just made it in the shade, baby. I need just some Kool-Aid. And she was bringing me up. I was so happy. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to be serving Vladi if you're ever in that uh, position where you have to serve him. Run. Call in sick. Say you have cramps, okay? <laughs> Hey, it's Alan Cable with another dog tip. I go to the dog park a lot. Sometimes I even bring my dog. And I see people there communicating with their dogs like they would another person. Talking to them like they're human. There's nothing wrong with that. But just so you know, your dog has no idea what you're saying. Your dog will never learn how to speak or act like a human. But you can definitely learn to speak dog. Your dog watches you a lot. He's studying your body language. Do you carry yourself like a strong, confident, and compact leader? Or do you get frazzled easily? Your dog is very sensitive to your state of mind. Dogs are always trying to find their place to find themselves within a pack. If you're a strong, confident, secure pack leader, you make that job a lot easier for your dog. So your dog will be much calmer. We've all seen the dogs at the park that are barking constantly and acting like nervous wrecks. That's because they are. Most of the time, dogs like that have been forced into the position of being the pack leader. And that's just not comfortable for them. They need you to step up and be the pack leader. And how do you do that? Well, by learning to speak dog. Your dog watches what you do. He's not concerned with your words. So if he enters the house first, he's in charge. If he walks ahead of you on a leash, he's in charge. If he disrespects your space or other folks and jumps on you, he's in charge. If you let him bark like crazy and run amok, he's in charge. The question is, how do you become the pack leader? It all starts with leash training and knowing how to give your dog a correction and only praising for the desired behavior. When he doesn't, you ignore him or you correct him. What is a correction? Pretty much it's like a tap on the shoulder. You're redirecting the dog's attention, putting him in the frame of mind you want him to be in. It's really important that you walk
walk your dog, get all that energy out. It'll make them calmer and easier for you to train. You want them to walk at your side or behind you, not in front. Let your arm be relaxed down at your side. No tension. With a little slack so that you can flick your wrist when you need to and cause a correction. Of course, you're going to need a choke chain or something similar. You might have to correct him many times before he gets the idea he needs to walk right by your leg and not pull. But he will get the idea. Use the heel command a lot. Just that one word. Just be consistent. Don't lose your patience. Be calm. Here is today's top automotive news story. I'm Nick Miles. Nissan has introduced the new 2020 Titan pickup with a bold design, including a first-of-its-kind hot Nissan badge with lava red accents featured on the off-road ready Pro 4X model. The 2020 Titan is not yet available for purchase, but is expected to be available in early 2020. You can see images and get your information on the 2020 Titan via Nissan's social media accounts. To find your new Titan, check out our reviews at ourautoexpert.com. Think O'Reilly Auto Parts for all of your car care needs. We're close, convenient, and known for our guaranteed everyday low prices and excellent customer service. For professional parts people you can trust, stop by your local O'Reilly Auto Parts today. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts. Better prices every day. This is an Animal Radio News Update. I'm Stacy Cohen for Animal Radio. Well, have you ever been to the airport and you had a dog go through your bags? Izzy's among a small number of luggage-inspecting beagles who live and work at the Kennedy Airport, though federal officials won't disclose the exact number of canines that are employed there. Technically, they're called a passive response dog. She's trained to sit whenever she smells one of several odors like fruit, meat, plant, seed, or vegetable. With just one sniff, Izzy can determine whether a bag is worth searching, a seconds-long appraisal that would actually take human officers hours to do, given that about a million travelers pass through Kennedy Airport in a single month. During her three years of employment, she's found everything from duck tongues... Who would eat a duck tongue? (laughs) What in the world? They're so, I mean, aren't they small duck tongues? How big could a duck tongue be? I don't know. The pig's feet and head they find. I don't know who would eat that either. But the agriculture, you know, have you ever gone to like Circle K? You see those pig's feet in a jar? Oh, the agricultural products vary according to the time of year. On average, about 28 pounds of food are collected every day. Most of it from people who are trying to sneak in food from their native countries. Thank God that uh, peanut butter and jelly is our staple here. The mild winters mean ticks have started stirring earlier this year as they wake from their dormant state and begin searching for meals of blood. The weather doesn't mean that there's going to be more ticks, but people should be aware of the parasites as they head out for hikes and climbs in this unseasonably nice weather. And as usual, people are advised be careful during the peak Lyme season. That's in May and June. Dr. Ellen Friedman, she's a vet at the Newburgh Animal Hospital. She said she's already seen cats and dogs coming in with ticks, though it's a little too early to tell whether they've been infected with Lyme or some other diseases. But as with humans, infections are just treated with antibiotics. You want to watch and make sure there aren't those little black things that are stuck on your uh, pet's coat. I'm Stacy Cohen. Get more animal breaking news at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update. Get more at AnimalRadio.com. You're listening to Animal Radio. Can't you see? Oh, can't you see? What that woman lost? She been doing to me Can't you see Can't you see What that woman Oh, she been doing to me Does that bring you back to the 70s like it does me? <laughs> Joey Volani, I know that uh, Marshall Tucker, a big band for you. I think we worked them in the early 80s, I think. It's, it's very possible. They've gone through several incarnations and the one mainstay of the whole band has been Doug Gray, the singer who obviously is, I'm going to be a little biased, is the best part of the band. So it's uh-huh. it's still a Marshall Tucker band. And they have a <laughs> brand new CD coming out. No, it's actually a vinyl. They're actually Holy doing moly. a record. I know. Who does Who records? does records anymore? That is uh, very cool. Yeah. I know. very cool because nothing sounds like a it, record. I don't care what anyone says. Records, records don't sound know what they very missed. warm. I know. Kids these days don't have a clue. They have. Yeah, what's a record? I'm going to pull my old uh, record player out of the closet for one of these. I think we're going to have giveaways in just a couple of seconds. But we welcome to the show, Doug Gray. Doug, how are you doing? Man, I'm doing really good, and uh, thanks for starting with that song. That seems to be a mainstay for all us uh, older guys and sometimes younger girls that uh, <laughs> uh, we go out and play for. And you know what? I let them sing that song now because it is traditionally turned into like the public outcry of Marshall Tucker Band. Uh, it's a timeless classic. It is. So now tell us about your animals. you have any? 
I do have some. I have uh, <laughs> I have two Himalayan Persian silver tips, okay, and uh, blue tips they call them. And I have two of those, and uh, they're Cheech and Chong. Yeah. <laughs> and that would be appropriate because any time you see two little small brothers that are about a minute and a half apart, and they actually look like bookends if they lay together, oh. which they do an awful lot. And I love those. And then uh, I have an outside cat that just refused to hang out inside, and he's called Bashful. Oh. And he was uh, he's we got him from the uh, society down here. You know, the, the, they didn't know telling what would happen to him. And uh, we have a, a dog, Wine and Rhymer, that doesn't stay at my house. He stays with my daughter and a little Yorkie. What do these animals bring to your life? Uh, peace, serenity, muse for music, what? Nerves and uh, <laughs> uh, they, the nerve part is when you, the refrigerator starts slowing down because of the long hair that's on the oh, kitty. Yes. Okay, so you know that little fan down there starts going. But then I say, you know, it's time to get them fixed, and I, sh- I, sh- I actually shave those kitties. I found that uh, I don't do it, but the girl at the place does it. And she says, uh, she says, you know, they act a lot different, and they honestly do. Some people like to watch them and, and be fully groomed out and, and feeling good but these two kitties are like they become my best friends when I come home and mm-hmm. they, they jump up and follow me around now if they're real they're real sluggish with all that hair mm-hmm. and I can understand I've had long hair all my ever since I got back from Vietnam Doug I want to introduce you to the team here I have Dr. Debbie to my left Vladi the world famous Russian dog wizard dog father Joey Volani who actually may have worked with you also have animal communicator Joy Turner right here and Joy I believe you've been talking to the animals. I have, and I can't make that sound because my tongue doesn't do that rolling R thing, but your Persians don't call themselves Persian cats. What do they call and themselves? Hal, can you do that? <laughs> they call them Persians yeah, like that. <laughs> they actually, they want to know if they can be a bigger sign in your music somehow. Oh, they so, want to be a muse. Yeah, they would like to, for instance, maybe have their pictures places because they, the cats think they are just like the end all to end all about beauty and handsomeness and <laughs> magnificence <almost> <laughs> and all of those kinds of things. Uh, I think they learned from some of my, and you're talking to be able to talk to them from one of my old bloodhounds that I used to have. I lived in a different house back in uh, a house years ago, and one of my uh Bloodhounds was named Blood. We actually had him brought in from, uh, I think it came from Europe. And uh, when he, well, I didn't even know where he was coming from, but I wanted one really bad. He's a young, quite uh, industrious, uh, young pup as a bloodhound. And um, he came in, and I was outside. And, you know, I think they want to know each other a lot of times. I don't really know this to be true, but it's like they look at me and say, God, I'd like to do what that little kitty did at that time. Scratch my arm, and I'm sitting down there, and, and the bloodhound, which was called Blood, okay, to make the story really cool, mm-hmm. because he was really called Blood. And I lived in a subdivision then, where as you run down the little alleyway in the back, and the houses are faced up, one's facing, both of them are facing to the rear. And Blood got out of his place that we were keeping him, being young and rambunctious as he did. And I'm running down the back way with my arm bleeding, which oh. comes from the kitty and me falling over into the trash. Right? <laughs> and the kitty scared me to death. I thought he was kind of like this big rodent that was chasing me around. And uh, I fell over, cut my arm, and I'm running down there holding my arm up in the air. I had long hair. I'd been at the pool, and I'm screaming. I'm going, blood, blood, come back, blood. <laughs> and so the police got called on me. My arm, I was holding it up in the air. I don't know what these people were thinking, but I think these kitties really were you know, they weren't around then, but I think they they kind of connected to him because they look at me like, oh, God, don't start hollering blood again. <laughs> For some reason, they like my armpit, and that's one of the What, what is with that? that? So does Hal's cat. I, I don't know, but, you know, it's a good feeling as long as you don't roll over. <laughs> Hal's cat does the same thing to him. Yeah. That's so strange. Start nibbling on my armpit for some strange. It's a little gross. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it's weird. It's more weird than gross. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> if they're going to try to do it, it scares me a little bit. And it's kind of like, I think that they know I find it extremely humorous that they do something like that. But burying in like that is kind of funny. Do you think you're more of a cat person or a dog person? 
I think I'm probably a cat person. That's cool. You know, we talked to a lot of, I think over the season of the stars, a lot of the celebs have said that they're mostly dog people. Well, I, I think guys don't like to admit yeah. that they're a cat person. Well, I, I don't understand that because the kitties, you can more or less feel them and read what they're saying. I can Mm-hmm. And I can see what they're saying or if they want something. And they have a little subtle way of going, ow. And if they do a big, long ow, that means, hey, man, check me out. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of thing. And I don't know that they really talk to me. That I think they give me signals. And uh, they're less than three years old. So they, you know, they're kind of sitting their ways. I have to put their uh, out overlooking the back deck. And I put the two dining room chairs together facing each other, and then I slide them together, and one gets on the other one, and if both of the chairs are not facing each other, uh, as they look out the window, they they both won't get up in the chair, okay? <laughs> they won't get in one chair. So they're, you know, finicky is the word, but uh, beauty is what's, that's when I looked at them, and I said, y'all look like bookends, and they both kind of looked at me, and, you know, they don't. They don't respond with their mouth very much. You know, if cats had lips, we'd be in a better place. Yeah. <laughs> we're with Doug Gray. Marshall Tucker Band is the band. And, uh, of course, uh, we're talking about Cheech and Chong, which uh, brings me back to the 70s also. <laughs> And uh, some of the music that I heard during the 70s. I'd like to go ahead and give away one of these CDs to 10 listeners. We have the brand new Marshall Tucker Band CD. And this is a, like a greatest hits CD. And it's also out on vinyl. Uh, we're not giving away the vinyl. You can get this at your your local record store. Uh, you might or, have to hunt that down, yeah? Or their website. Or the website. website. We can get yes. it the website, too. Yes. Doug Gray, uh, we're so glad you spent time with us today. So much time. And uh, go give Cheech and Chong some big old hugs from all of us, will you? Well, I can certainly do that. And if I can ever do anything, y'all know where to find me, okay? So yeah, the website, MarshallTucker.com. And the CD is called the Marshall Tucker Band Greatest Hits. I have 10 copies at one 405 8 405 right now. Uh, you can get it from the website or uh, any one of these stores that still has vinyl on their shelves, I imagine. Fido Friendly Magazine presents the 11th Annual Cross Country Pet Adoption Tour. Get your licks on Route 66. Brought to you by media sponsor Animal Radio and companion sponsors Paws and Claws, Blackwood Pet Food, and Zymox. The tour travels from Los Angeles to Chicago from September 7th to October 13th, stopping at shelters along the way to support adoption events and to raise money for the shelters. Advocate sponsors Hands on Gloves, Tito's Vodka, Rolf C. Hagen, and Buddy Belts, along with community sponsor Doggy Water to Go. Help provide great prizes when you donate to spin our giant spinning wheel with all proceeds benefiting the shelter that day. Log on to FidoFriendly.com to learn where the tour stops near you. And who knows, you just might find your new forever friend. This is Animal Radio. Hey, Alan, welcome to the show. Yeah, you know, my mom's dog was following my mom yesterday, like vacuuming, and a dog got something in her eye, and the dog died. Like, and the dog her. died? Oh, in the dog's eye. Oh, in the dog's eye. Yeah, oh, I, my I, gosh. Okay. And so what is the doggy doing right now? The doggy is, like, try to, like, get something out of the dog's eye. It's not getting out. And okay. my mom is wondering what should she do to get it out. So um, he's rubbing at the eye, scratching at the eye? Yeah. Okay. And is he squinting in it and holding it closed? Yeah. All right. The first thing I'm going to tell you is that anytime a dog has um, squinting in the eye, that means there's there's pain there. So there's discomfort. So my best recommendation is to get him evaluated by a veterinarian because we want to make sure he doesn't have any kind of abrasion on his eye, um, which would be termed a corneal ulcer. So that's the hard thing. When you have a squinting eye, you can have that from pain of any sort. Um, but an ulcer can be very serious. So we don't want to delay that and um, do home care if we're in that level of discomfort for the eye. Now, certainly in the short term, the things I would do um, in any emergency kit for people at home with dogs, when we're talking about eyes, I want some contact saline rinse that you would use for your your family members that might have contacts. You can use that as an eye irrigating solution to loosen things that might be under the eyelids or any kind of particulates, any kind of dust or anything like that that might be in the eye. That's perfectly safe for dogs to use that. Now, that being said, you can also use 
use things like artificial tears that are also sold in the contact lens aisle. Um, Refresh brand tears is just one of the types of tears that you can put in to help kind of make the eyes feel more comfortable. But that's a short-term thing. If that baby's eye is red, squinting, and we're uncomfortable, you really need to get the baby into the veterinarian. And very likely, we'd want to do something called a corneal stain. And it's a type of a stain technique that we put um, this dye on the eye, and it helps to outline any kind of scratches or ulcers that could be on the surface of the eye. Um, If we have something like that, there's a certain regimen, certain type of treatment that needs to be done. So that's why it's so important to see your vet if we're in that kind of category of things. Um, And definitely, I'd say at this point, you said this is already the day later that the eye is, he's still squinting? Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say, uh, you know, that would definitely be a timeline that I'd I'd get the baby to the veterinarian. I just don't like, there's some situations where it's good and there's a lot of tips you can do at home, but there's that point where we cross the line where we are maybe not doing the the best by them if we're delaying seeing the veterinarian. And and I'd have to say this this warrants a call uh, to get the baby in. So tell your mama that I said. (laughs) Gotta go. Thanks for your, thanks for your call, Alan. Just got a Facebook for Vlade, and they want to know how to raise a deaf dog, a dog that cannot hear. How do you raise a deaf dog? In one in one soundbite, to get another dog who would teach that dog the proper tricks. That Ooh. would be easiest things for me to do. That's pretty good. That's uh, I hadn't thought about that. Are they tougher to train deaf dogs? It is because you need to use hand signals and they're using a lot of positive reinforcement and sometimes you do corrections, but you got to first use your body as the whole machine. For instance, let me give me examples. If you want your dog sit, make the like a sharp lean over the shoulders where your teeth almost goes to the close to the neck. Oh. Don't bow it like Barack Obama did in the past. No, just stay taller, like a tall. And, um, you know, the dog doesn't sit. You use the leash and, 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 and pull the dog in the position, give the treats. You know, you can use also uh, hand signal as the raising your hand as you do. If you don't like something, move forward. Moving forward means assertiveness. You would like to invite the dog coming to you why don't you go backwards and a little bit kneel down that's the sign of friendliness you don't like it forward you want to follow backwards you want the dog sit lean over the shoulders that's the few things and uh, there are so many subtleties but again there is a difference between hard work and easy work in order to do the easy work get another dog who will teach your dog how to handle the things around will be the best friends and the best buddies and the best relationship. You take Mika with you whenever you go to somebody's house to train dogs, I notice. Yes. Mika becoming like a model dog. For instance, <laughs> if the family yes, if the family have a kids, you know, the kids is always mom gets those pets for their kids and stuck with them themselves. Of course it's never business for their husbands, husbands never home, so I come in and just I say, look, mother, if you're not going to make sure, sh- I want to make sure the kids are involved in the training. Oh, they don't want to. So, look, let's give them a great example. I got to teach your kids to get control over the Mika. And the Mika loves the kids. And one of the reasons she loves the kids because I always socialize her with the kids. as the positive things. She always was around the kids, mm. especially she loves little girls. So, anyway... Uh, and that's what my upset was with the dog bites because I had a few kids who <laughs> fingers. Sorry for saying that on the air. Just in her butt, doctor. Just uh, oh, they pull the tail and put the fingers oh. on because the kids were very cur- curious. That's really, that's really. Mika, poor Mika, screamed, never even thinking to bite anyone. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> I so, would bite. <laughs> if anyone did that to me, I would <laughs> bite. <laughs> Look, in Russia, it's, in Russia it's, a, it's a standard procedure. Every man goes to the doctor one time ah. per month, and they put the finger in your butt, and they do massage. It's called prostate massage. And uh, Doctor, do you know that that's procedure? Do oh, sure, yeah. We dogs? do that to co- we do that collecting urine samples. But you know what? As long as you didn't like have to leave a 20 after the visit. <laughs> 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 oh boy! Yeah, I, I'm sure you're enjoying that procedure, but it's a different topic. <laughs> okay, w- w- what we're talking about? Hold on, what am I? T- I have no idea what we're talking. Hey, listen, if you want to send us an email, your voice at animalradio.com. You can also send us your questions on Facebook at Animal Radio or tweet us at Animal Radio. Have a great week. This. <laughs>
is Animal, Animal. Animal. Radio Network. Network.